Hello, everyone. My name is Priyal Porwal. I'm currently working at Salesforce, and I'm from India. So I have been thinking something lately that why do we build applications for our users so that they can use all the amazing features that we bundle in an application. As long as the users are within our application, they can use all the functionality that the app offers. But what about when they're not using the application or not within it? Is there any way in which they can use the app functionality even when they are not inside the application? You must be thinking why I'm talking about all of these things. So I have been working on an application. It's Daysaver. It allows me to track my daily activities. And lately, I've been feeling that it is slowing me down because I have to go into the application, add all the details about the event, and continue with my activity. I was just thinking if it can be a bit quicker so that maybe I don't have to open the application, I don't have to enter all the details in one go, and I can just maybe add a small description and come back to it later on when I have more details to add to it. So how can I do that? Like, my main thing that I was thinking is that, is there a way that in which I can expose my app functionality outside my application, Daysaver, and maybe use the system features like Spotlight, Shortcuts, maybe create a widget, or use CD to use those app functionality. Well, that's possible. <laughs> With the right code, we can expose our app functionality outside the application and make it available to the system. And using the system features, we can actually perform the functionality that our application is performing. How to do that? Well, app intense was just the right thing. So this is my day saver application in which I had to go into the application and add all the details. So what changed with app intense is, what, is that I no longer had to go into the application. I, can, I created a shortcut for, my, for the action that I wanted to perform in my application. And I just triggered it. I just had to add a short description. And I was good to go. I can continue with my task without worrying about filling all the details, which maybe I don't even know at the moment. So that was quite quick. And, and I was just feeling that this is a really good thing to have in all the applications. So here I am to share about App Intense with all of you so that even you can expose your app functionality outside the application so that your users can make full use of the application. Rather than opening the application, they can just maybe use the App Intense and perform certain tasks quickly. So Apple introduced App Intense uh, in iOS 16. How to add App Intense in our application is something that we are going to talk about today. App Intense is not a feature in itself today. It's not a feature in itself, and it is basically a foundation which is used to build features programmatically. Through App Intense, we can define what are the core actions of our application, and using the system features like Spotlight, Shortcuts, Widgets, and Siri, and soon Apple Intelligence, we can trigger these core actions even outside the application without going into the app. That's, that sounds interesting, right? So yeah, so like once we have gone through this, let's go ahead and um, yeah, let's talk about the agenda that we will be going through today. We will be going through the building blocks of App Intense. We'll also see how we can develop App Intense how we can index our app entities so that the very useful core spotlight feature can be used to retrieve and search for our entities in a better way. We'll also see how we can enhance our existing intents to be available to Apple Intelligence and Siri. So let's start with going through a few of the basic building blocks of app intents. The first one is intent. Intent is the verb or the action that our app intent wants to perform. The other one is entity. Entity is a noun or basically a 
basically like in our day in my day saver application entity is my event the event that i want to create in my application now if an intent is the uh, verb entity is the noun we have a shortcut which combines these two into a sentence and this sentence provides a meaningful action to the system so that the system can perform that task and give the result to the user app intent handles all the uh, background functionality required to perform the interaction between the system features and their application so the developers just have to worry about their app functionality rather than going and worrying about how this will work internally now that you have some general idea about app intents let's have a look at some code now so app intent is a protocol so all uh, all the intents in our app must confirm to app and uh, app intent uh, protocol now to confirm to this protocol we need to provide a title this is the title of my app intent i also need to provide a perform method this perform method is the uh, is the main part where the actual action happens where the actual uh, where the actual work that the app intent wants to perform goes inside this method we return a intent result from this perform method let's see what this perform method does this intent is to get my calories burned throughout the day so this app intent is getting the calories burned value and returning the result with this value as well as a dialog so with the dialog i am specifying to the system that the information that you will show to me by running this intent show it to me in the form of a dialog so now once um, also like we have a description here so this description is something which is mainly useful for your users so like when they are deciding if they would like to use this intent they can go through this description and understand what's the action that the app intent is performing where will this appear so let's see so like this is my shortcuts application for um, and i have searched for day saver in this day server i see the list of app intents that i have created and at the bottom i wanted to see what this get calories burned intent does and i can see there's a short description which i added to the intent uh, comes up here now if i select this uh, intent and uh, i will be shown on another screen here i can add the app intent to my shortcuts now once that is also done i see the shortcut uh, in my shortcuts app Uh, i can run it from here or i can go to the spotlight and search for the shortcut and directly run it from there so handy right now the information that will be shown to me is in the form of a dialog i didn't have to go into the application and the information was shown to me i i really loved it <laughs> now uh, there can be another use case where um, like maybe i need to go into the application to perform certain action just showing a dialog uh, with some information is not the thing that i'm looking for so let's have a look at another example uh, this is my another intent which is create new log entry i want to open the application and add all the details i have some time so uh, what i can do is i can use the api open app when run and set it to true and this will do all the work for me i just have to set it to true and uh, handle the navigation which will take me to the correct place in the application where i can carry forward with the uh, action that i want to perform i am using at the rate main actor here because i am opening an application here so once i add this shortcut to my shortcuts application and when i run it it opens my application directly to where i have to add the uh, task and i can just enter the details and be done with it so with this we have seen that how we can open the application and how we can see the information outside the application but till now we have not passed any uh, um, like passed any data from the system features like shortcuts or intents to the application so let's see that how we can do it so here i'll so in my day saver application my main model is the event it has all the properties that uh, are responsible for different event categories but it has a lot of expensive properties as well which i don't want to use in my app intent 
So I can, so I'll create a different entity for the app entity, which will be conforming to app entity and will be referring to the underlying model entity. And I don't have to worry about the, uh, about the expensive properties that the event has. Now this is done, then there is one more new API that has been introduced, which is indexed entity. So indexed entity internally conforms to app entity, and it uses CS searchable index to index our entities based on the attribute sets that we provide. Attribute set is basically an information that we provide to the system so that they can better understand our entity and provide better relevant results to the user based on their query. So how does that work? So here, CS searchable index is something that Core Spotlight uses to index our app entities. CS searchable index uses CS searchable item, and each CS searchable item has CS searchable item attribute set. This attribute set contains the information about your app entity. So the more information you provide, the more information the system has to better interact and provide relevant results to your user. What index entity does in our case here is that it allows us to modify the attribute set, like provide customized values to it, which are so that the system can understand your activity in a better way. So how I'm using it in my day saver application is like this. My event entity that confirms to indexed uh, entity protocol, uh, I am adding an attribute set here. Uh, by default, attribute set refers to the default uh, representation. Uh, but here, uh, I'm also providing title and the content description in the form of uh, my message property so that the system has more information about my event entity. Now, moving ahead, this is how my event entity looks like. It looks like a lot of code, but we'll go through it one by one. <laughs> So here, as we can see, my event entity is conforming to indexed entity and identifiable. Every app entity needs to have three things. One is the display representation, which will be used by the device to draw the entity or to mention it in some menu uh, may be required in our app intent. It, we also need to provide a, uh, a unique identifier to our app, and, uh, app entity. And the third thing that we need to provide is a default query. Now, what exactly is this default query? So a default query in our case is, uh, is a type that is conforming to entity uh, string query. Entity string query is another protocol which is internally conforming to entity query. And it allows the system to, uh, to, to retrieve the entity using the entity identifiers. So here, as we can see, we have three methods here. Uh, and these three methods can be used by the system to fetch or retrieve the entity based on the identifier or the search string. And also, we can get the suggested entities based on the uh, query that the user has asked. Now, having covered these things, there is also, like, we can, in our entity, we can add the property. So here, I've added a property title for my app entity. Now being covered all of these things, how can I make this entity available to Apple intelligence? So to be able to expose or make my entity available to Apple intelligence, there are a set of Swift macros that we need to add to our app entity and uh, intent. Starting with the app entity, we need to add assistant entity macro to my, uh, to my app entity and Considering my application is very close to journaling, uh, I have used the app domain as journal, and the assistant schema that I'm using is the entry, because this is the uh, main entity model that I have for my application. So with that mentioned, uh, this is what we just talked about. Uh, corresponding to this uh, Swift macro, there are certain properties that I need to add additionally so that Apple intelligence can get all the information it requires from my app entity to serve the user better. So here, these are the few properties that I have additionally added. 
uh, adding the Swift macro also confirms our app entity internally to a set of protocols which are required by Apple intelligence. So that just happened in the background. We don't have to do anything for that. Now, looking at the intent that we are talking about, so this is a create event intent, the intent I have been talking about since the beginning. I don't want to go into the application to add an entry. So this is what will help me here. So now with this event, uh, I have, again, I want it to be available to Apple Intelligence. So I've added a Swift macro here, which is the assistant intent. Uh, again, this assistant intent is using the journal domain. And in the journal domain, we are using uh, create entry assistant schema. Uh, again, I need to provide certain entities that Apple Intelligence requires. So we have done that. And looking at the perform method here, the perform method is, uh, use, is returning as the event entity, which is our assistant entity here. And we are, um, we are like creating, like whatever message I have entered in my app intent, I'm using that. I'm creating an event, and I'm also indexing my newly created entity through CS searchable index API so that when this event is created, I would be able to go back to the spotlight and directly search for this, uh, for this event directly. And now, once my entity is created, I'm just returning it, which is the requirement for my perform method. Having done that, I can add the, I can add the shortcut to that in my shortcut application. And now, when I run it, I just have to add a small description here and I can continue with my work. I didn't have to go into the application, so it was very handy for me. I am happy, and I hope with the information that I have shared here with you, you would also be able to add app intents in your application and make it easier, and, uh, make it easier for your users to use your app functionality even when they're not in the application. One of the best things about app intent is that it supports accessibility. So even the users that use VoiceOver would be able to use uh, the would be able to use your app functionality through these uh, system features like Spotlight or shortcuts or widgets. They won't have to go into the application, so it would be very easy and quick for them as well. And one another thing that is important with App Intense is that all the system features like Spotlight, shortcuts, widgets, Siri. They're all internally based on app intents. And whatever code you're writing for one uh, feature, or like once you have created an app intent, you can use that same app intent across all of these system features. So it's like getting a whole package of functionality by just creating an intent. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> so yeah. Uh, with this, I would like to thank you all for listening to my talk. And yeah, thank you.